Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, aren't those just the most magical voices you ever heard? Of course, I am here at Living Felt in Central Texas with the most magical of fairies all waiting to show you some really cool stuff to felt with. And today we have a really fun project. We are going to be needle felting this sweet little Waldorf fee Fee Berry, Bee Fairy, yeah, Bee Fairy. She is just so precious, and it doesn't matter whether you are a skilled needle felter. Uh, you know, I've been felting for 20 years, and I needle felt stuff like that because it's just so much fun. And so I look forward to sharing her with you today. So say hi and where you're from. If you're watching the replay, comment down below. This is an active, interactive show, and we want to hear from you. We want to hear your ideas, your comments. Maybe even tell us why you like needle felt. I'd love to know why you do what you do. I want to say hi to some folks. Hey there to Stephanie. Hi to Audrey in the UK and Christina in Poland. Thank you guys always for tuning in. I know it's late there. We just appreciate you being here with us. Um, Joanne is in Tennessee and Brenda is all the way in California. Pamela also on the West Coast in Oregon. Hi to Maureen in Ontario. We appreciate you being here, dear. And Karen all the way in Sweden. Hi to Sandy in Wisconsin and Felicia in Georgia. Thank you all so much for being here so we want you to comment during the show let us know maybe what you, you know aha moments you have or what tips you have as well if you comment during the live show you get entered to win a prize and hey if you comment after the show down below then you also get entered to win prizes so we're giving away two prizes right now last week my guest was Irina Hughes she has a new class coming up on feltingtutorials.com for making that amazing elephant right behind me so if you missed that show be sure and catch it our prizes from that show go out to Margot Lehman and Susan Dillon, congratulations to both you gals. You win a MC1 studio pack of your choice. So just reach out to us on our website right there. Scroll down and use the contact us page. So the fairies are right here right now. They're all lined up, just looking lovely, of course. <laughs> and they like to show you some things that you might like to consider for your felting. And it looks like summer in my eyes and today's project too. So the first up is the very magical fairy, Alyssa. Yay! Yeah! Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to share with you these colors that have really inspired us this summer. This is our Summer Flowers MC1 Studio Pack. Um, it comes with six colors, about a half ounce in each color, of each color. Um, they rotate, but this is a good representation of the usual colors. This is rose petal, honeysuckle, coral reef, true red, orange cream, and hot orange. All right. Lots of love for that pack. <laughs> Yay. Up next is Fairy Angela. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Hello everyone, um, so if you're wanting to add some more summer colors to your fiber stash, I would recommend our Dreaming of Summer um, Merino Top Studio Pack. It comes in six different colors of a 19 and a half micron <laughs> Merino Top. Um, there's coral, citrus, red, daffodil, sunshine, oh I got fiber stuck in my fingernail, <laughs> and zinnia. <laughs> so merino top is great for wet felting, nano felting, and just anything that you would want like a longer fiber for. Um, and up next is Fairy Ann. Yay! <laughs> hey beautiful people, thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. I am sharing a collection of 10 of our skin tone colors in the MC1 batting. These are these colors are great for, <clears throat> you know, like I said, using as skin tones. This is not a bundle. <laughs> these we've we've thought about doing a bundle, but if we ever ran out or ran really low on one color, we wouldn't be able to to fulfill the entire pack. So these colors, well, there's not a one click option at the moment. They are all available individually on the website in a variety of different sizes. So no matter your project, we got you. We got you covered. <laughs> so this one right here, we've got linen, sand, pale peach, peachy, suntan, bottom row, latte, caramel, clay, espresso bean, and dark chocolate. 
Mm-hmm. Lots of love for that, and <laughs> lots of love. Next up is Fairy Kayla. Yay! Woohoo! Hey everybody, how are you doing? I am super happy to announce. <laughs> this is actually going to be a kit, this beautiful little bee baby right here. <laughs> it's going to come with all the fiber you need to make your own little Waldorf doll. You get to pick your skin tone to make you personalize it a little bit. Um, and then let's see, the only thing additionally you would need with this kit is needles and foam if you don't already have those. And the link to get this little kit is going to be down in the description below. So while well, we got bees on the brain, I had a question for everybody today. <laughs> Anne's already like covering her face. <laughs> okay, what do you call a bee that is hard to understand? What, what do you call a bee, bee that is hard to understand? understand? A mumblebee. Oh! <laughs> All right, there's my hook. I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. <laughs> yeah. A big round of hearts for all the fairies. This is our crew. We lovingly call them the fairies. And you know, even where they work and pack all your orders is called Fairy Alley. And lots of goodness happens there. So we appreciate them so much. And thank you all so much for being here as well. So I'm going to get myself set up. I've been reading some of your comments. This is what we're making today. Our sweet little Waldorf style doll, Bee Fairy. What I like about the little Waldorf dolls, besides the fact that their energy is just so sweet, is that they don't have faces, and that is intentionally so that the children can envision whatever they want on the little doll. It just leaves it neutral for the doll, the, the child that's playing with it. And this little girl has some cute little wings. I'll just put a piece of paper back here so you can see, and I'm gonna show you everything you need to learn um, to make her today. And so um, if you don't have your supplies ready, well, we will, I'm gonna pop up a little supply list for you right here, but there's also a link in the description. You can either just download the supply list, you can get a little PDF that has complete wing pattern available, or you can get the kit and you'll get the wings and all the supplies uh, to make her as well, whatever you like. And I'm going to um, do my best here I'm going to do my best here to, um, I'm getting a note that says, okay, I'm, I'm going to do my best here to read your questions as we needle felt together. So let's look at a few of the uh, basic supplies real, really quickly. We're going to be working with um, two chenille stems for this project. We're going to be working with our CW1 core wool. I'm using our roving, which I really like. I'm going to use just a few colors. I've chosen, a, this is the pale peach skin tone, which is one of the very fair skin tones. Uh, we're using MC1 black onyx, MC1 lemon peel, and then for her hair, a special surprise, I'm using sari silk waist. So that will be really fun to see. Besides the chenille stems, the other thing I used for this little girl is four millimeter glass black eyes for her antenna. It just seemed so right. And then of course the wings that I have for you and I'll get you to how we do the wings. So hopefully um, get your stuff together. If you're watching the replay, it just takes a little amount of wool, a little bit of love and you can bring this sweet little uh, fairy to life. Um, so sorry you can see all my stuff in the uh, periphery here. I want to just kind of pay attention in case uh, anything goes squirrely and I'll do my best I said to read your questions. All right we have two colors of chenille stems we're working with and um, for this project I or for the kit we're including a black and a, a, just a lighter color. It might be white, it might be tan, it might be light gray, it doesn't really matter. So one of these is going to be for the arms and one is gonna be for the body and the antenna. Grab a ruler and we want the arm wire, this is gonna be the arm wire, is the light colored one and we're gonna cut that one to approximately six inches and we can just set it aside. We'll just get these ready for us. So that means out of each one of these chenille stems you can make two dollies. But out of the black one, uh, we want this to be 8 inches, so this is a, a 12 inch. I'm going to take off about 4 inches right there. 
and this is going to be for the body and then this large piece will be for the body and then this part will be will use for the antenna so I'm going to set those aside now that we have our wires done the first thing I want to do is needle felt the head she has a very small head um, my doll she is approximately fully standing uh, not counting the antenna of course from the top of her head to the bottom is this one is about five inches my next one is about five and a half inches but her head is only an inch and we are going to be covering it with a skin tone so the first thing you want is to pull out your core wool and uh, for those of you who are new we use core wool so that your dyed wool goes further that's the only reason if you don't have core wool you can just use your dyed wool we do want this to be fairly firm i know a lot of waldorf dolls may not be super well uh, not well but maybe not be firmly needle felted but i want this dolly to hold up for play if she's played with i want her to last so we start with a strip of our core wool and it's just a very nice nice lightweight strip you're going to need less than like a tenth of an ounce it's more like point five uh it's, it's a very very tiny tiny amount it's not even a tenth so of an ounce roll it very tight just like this very very tightly and before you go too far and while you're keeping all of the air out of your ball hit it with your felty needle and get the fibers to bind in on themselves it doesn't matter what kind of core wool you have. Some people will say, "Do I? what if I have this or what if I have that? This is our CW1 core wool. We like it because it's so versatile. Um, and you know, you can wet felt it, you can needle felt it. We use it as picture bases. Um, we use it for all kinds of things. You just wanna keep rolling and tucking in all your corners as you go so that you get a nice round sphere. And I just want to needle felt it a little bit as we go. And again, I don't want the head to be too big. So I'm actually going to pull off this balance. We're going to be covering it with a couple of layers of skin tone. And all of this extra, just tuck around and needle felt it until it's round. Okay. I let go of it there for a second, but that's okay. Because again, we're going to cover it up. And I think I'll zoom in here just a little bit for you. Um, so we can get a little closer. And for those who are new, please ask questions. What you'll see is that our BFFs, our veterans in the chat, will be happy to answer if I don't quite get to a question. And I'll check in on you a minute in, in a minute and answer any questions I can as well. With this ball, don't stop short of needle felting it really smooth and really firm. Right now, I'm using a 36 triangle needle, which is very coarse. You don't have to have such a coarse needle, but it can help more quickly build up dense pieces. If you don't have a coarse needle, you might use something like a 38 star or a 38 spiral. That will get you there as well. It takes a little more time. And you can also use one of my faves uh, is a, a little cluster of finer needles. This is 42 triangle. And just when you needle felt a ball, the key is to not stay in one place too long and just keep tackling it all the way around. So needle felt the sphere as a whole as opposed to concentrating on one side. So needle felt your ball until it is very compact. It should actually be slightly smaller than one inch and it should be round, not lumpy or looking like mashed potatoes like mine does still currently right now. Just needle felt it until you get a really nice round firm shape. So to save us time and make sure we, can, we have time to make our whole B, I'm going to jump to one that I have done and I'm very happy with. It's very just nice little round ball. And that just takes time. And as you can see, it's about one inch. And I don't want the head to get too much bigger for this little dolly. So that's why you wanna stop at one inch, at least for about a five inch doll. That'll, that'll look like a little girl as opposed to a doll with a, a big head. 
The first thing we're going to do is cover this with your choice of skin tone. Now the kit uh, that we're offering comes with a selection of skin tone. We offered you, I think, five different colors of our skin tone range. And if you just aren't happy with those selections, let us know in the comments what you want and we'll get you one of the other skin tones we showed. But it comes with the pale peach. Um, it comes, let me show you real fast what it comes with. Peachy suntan. I think these are the colors we're offering right here. These are the colors you can get. So uh, pale peach. This is pale peach, the dolly that I'm doing right now. Pale peach, uh, suntan, clay, and espresso. All of these skin tones. There, I think that there's one more. Look when you get online, and I think there's one more color you can choose. and we just like to have a variety of skin tones and we do have a pretty good selection, I think. Okay, so take a very small amount of your skin tone and if you have a blunt edge of your fiber, you can always pull it off. The key is we want to not have big lumps. We want it always to taper. And we're going to just cover this ball a little bit. We don't even have to wrap all the way around the sides, meaning the top and the bottom, let's say. We're we just wanna go around the sphere once and a very thin layer, because we're gonna cover it again. So take this off, and I like to use my little cluster needle for this. And you don't have to poke very deeply when you're using a very fine needle. You can just make little shallow pokes. Don't worry about the holes at this stage right here because this is really an, uh, a, it's like an under layer of color. You just want that wool attached and laying down. And I like to go all the way around like this, pushing the excess around as I go. And then I'll tackle the tops and bottoms, if you will, or the sides. Just get everything laying down. And this is just a draft laying down, meaning I've not been really um, tedious about getting all the fibers to be perfect. I think detail is key with these little dollies. You know, it doesn't have to be high detail to have a, a nice level of finish, um, but you do want them well felted, smooth, so that the fibers cannot be roughed up when you touch them. Um, you want them to be well attached so they won't come apart. And um, yeah, I think just looking, looking cute. So I'm gonna look here and try and see if y'all have any questions as we work. Please do uh, feel free to ask. And if you just feel like you have too much, you can always pull off uh, that little excess. And if you need more with something like the MC1 batting, you can always patch it on. This is our goal right now, is just one pass of the head in your skin tone, a thin layer, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get that one layer on there. Now, as rough as this looks, go ahead and set it aside. Just, put, just park your little head right there. We are going to move on to the arms, the hands. And I like to do this in um, two stages. So the first thing we're going to do is just take the very tip and bend it back into sort of a half hook. Don't close it all the way down. Just a little like half hook, just like that. And then we're going to get our skin tone and you want to get very, very little, a thin layer uh, and, you know, traditionally people work with a longer fiber. It might even be New Zealand Corydale or something that's a long staple length. But MC1 is very conducive to little projects like this because it will really grab onto itself. It's great for miniature and fine detail. And if you can't get it, you know, where you are, then just work with what you have. Um, uh, and so here we go with this we're going to take this little piece of fiber and we're gonna put it right underneath this little hook that we made and then close the hook down. So now you can see that the fiber is being held 
you know, by that little hook that we made. It's okay to have some folding over here. We're going to just twist. Twist right off the end so that you get what I call this little, you get this little loose bit at the top. Go around maybe like two, three times and then you're gonna fold that down and then fold your wool right back over with it. If you've made larger dolls with me, you know this is how I make fingers as well, um, individual fingers, so it's how I start a lot of things. So just twist that around and don't lose tension of it. But with MC1 batting, the nice thing is you can just rip that off now, not letting go, and I'm just gonna twist. Twisting in your fingers like this, the fiber is actually dry felting to itself and it's held on. So then we'll take a very fine, I thought I had a single needle here. I better find what I did with that. A single uh, 42 triangle and then we're just going to tack that down. So bear with me one second. Missing supplies. Sorry. I'm going to put down a little piece of felt. If you are feeling like your fibers pick up your, your piece, picks up any colors off your mat that you're needle felting on, put down a fresh piece of felt or even a little piece of fabric and then you can kind of give it a little fresh place to park while you needle felt it. When you poke these little fingers, watch your needle and just go to the middle. Notice the angle so that you don't bang into the wire. Um, you, you don't want to go straight into the wire. You just want to get all this fiber laying down. So shallow pokes and a steep angle. And you're going to do this for both sides. Just do that for both sides and take your time because if this is going to be a play toy for a child, you want that fiber to lay down. Um, if, you, if it really is going to be played with and your little ones are not very gentle, well then you could, you know, you could treat it with a little 50-50 solution, just the hands of uh, like PVA glue or fabric hardener and water and just tap it on there to get that to lay down but I would only do it on the fingers, you know, that might get roughed up. So do that on both sides and cover both sides of, of your chenille stem. Oh, I thought I'd already done both sides. Haha, ha, I have to do this one now. Um, okay, so you're gonna do that for both, both sides of your chenille stem. Now, we want to wrap the arms, uh, but we're going to do that after we attach it to the body. So this is our eight inch piece for our body and we're going to just, oh, this is my eight inch piece. Uh, we're going to fold this in half. I feel like I cut my piece too short. We're gonna fold your eight inch piece in half, just like this. And the arms are going to go, yes, you're gonna complete both arms, so ignore that only one of mine is half done. You're going to pinch this here and now give this a twist and twist it all the way down. So now you have this little, the arm's gonna feel loose in there even if you pinch this down. So what I like to do is just get it well centered uh, so that you know you have it divided in two and then wrap one this way and one this way and see how quickly that keeps the arm from flip flopping around. So we have our body from the eight inch piece, our arms from the six inch piece and now we're going to wrap the arms in black up to what will be the neck. The pipe cleaner for the arms rows is six, uh, is six inches long. Yes, I see some people answering for us. Thank you so much, y'all, for chiming in. Yep. Um, okay, so here is uh, the black wool, this is black onyx that we're using for her arms. And again, the key to keeping these things from getting really messy, uh, and that might be hard to see on here, the key from keeping those things from getting really messy and lumpy and bumpy is to go very, very thin and narrow on your strips. So peel off little tiny thin layers. 
I think I have some here, let's see. You wanna work with little tiny thin layers and you can always do two layers instead of one if you want it to be thicker. Um, and control is the key here. So check this out. When I wanna tear this batting, which is a very short fiber, I'm going to fold it in half first and this allows me to control it by tearing it this way. Then I unfold it and I want to wrap the arm here. If you want to get as clean as you can at what will be the end of the sleeve, go ahead and just give that a little fold over so you have a little start of a clean edge. And then we're going to put it right there at the end of the hand, grab onto it, and then just wrap. If you're working with a longer staple fiber, this is going to be a little bit, it, it might seem like it's a little more slippery and you might need to needle felt it down right away. But on the batting, the MC1 batting, you don't. Just, the key is just to hold pressure. And notice that I like to twist the item as opposed to just twisting the fiber. If it feels um, uneven anywhere, like I've got a, a little uh, bump here, you can just unwrap it before you seal it down, or you can go back over it with another piece of fiber. Once you get to the body, anchor it now to the body. We're not gonna see it under there. Just anchor it right to the torso and then needle felt it all down. I'm using my fine needle here because it is so tiny and it is so small. Um, so you want it to be really fine and you don't want it to go all the way through. That is a challenge on these little pieces not to go all the way through to the other side. So you, you're gonna need to go back and forth a few times to get it on all the sides and get it all laying down. But this doesn't require a whole bunch of needle felting. If you've used MC1 batting um, and you have really twisted it as you go. Okay, so I'm gonna try and see. Um, okay. I'm trying to read what you all say. Thank you so much uh, for your feedback. Thanks for your questions, y'all, and thanks for helping each other. So, okay, so you're gonna do this on both sides and needle felt them until they're smooth and even. If you need to add more wool, you can, and you can also add more wool later. So once your little, both arms are done, this is what they're going to look like. So I wrapped mine with some extra layers of wool and we've just anchored them on the body, but right here, all I have is still this little chenille stem uh, ready to go. Now, the, before I go any further, the next thing I wanna do is to put my head on my doll. And we're gonna do that in what's really kind of more traditional style for making a Waldorf doll. And we're going to take our skin tone, again, a very thin layer, um, not too much. You can just check your sizing and see what, what you need. What we want is that it's going to wrap all the way around the head and we're going to have enough to attach it to the body down here. Um, traditionally, a Waldorf fairy, they might wrap the wings around, uh, the wings, it might wrap the arms around the neck, but we don't really need to do that because we're using a batting that needle felts really well in the MC1 batting. We do want this though. We want to be able to grab it and have enough down that we can tack it onto the body. So um, from here, before we attach it to the body, I want to tack this down and I'm going to use my fine needle. Notice that it doesn't even go necessarily all the way around the head. It's a very thin layer, but tack it down and you can do the detailing on this now or later. And by detailing, I mean getting all of the air out, making sure all of it is smooth. There's no wrinkles, there's no bumps. And if you get any unwanted fiber in there, pick it out as soon as you see it. If you have any vegetable matter in your wool, don't freak out about that. Just pull it out, it's no big deal. Sheep get into all kinds of shenanigans <laughs> and that often will be in the fiber if the fiber is not heavily processed with chemicals um, like MC1 is not. It does not go through a heavy chemical burnout process. We try and keep it as natural as we can for being um, a commercially processed and dyed fiber. Now, when I get to my dolly, I'm gonna really fuss over this head and make sure all of that fiber is laying down. But in the essence of time, what we're gonna do is remember, we, we so we left this part open 
and we're going to attach it down here to the body. Make sure you have enough to go around both sides so that you can grab it. And we are actually gonna give our little dolly a little bit of a neck. I just wanna make sure that we have fiber coming down. Take a very thin, thin, let me get a very thin piece of fiber like this, very thin, and we can give it a little bit of a neck piece. And I don't have much hanging down the back. I was, I was chatting and not paying attention. I'm gonna give myself a little extension here. I know this is gonna confuse some people, but hang with me. You basically want attachments both front and back on your piece. We are going to take a small piece of fiber, hold it tight just right at the base of the head, and wrap around, so very close. Don't make this big. You can always make it bigger later if you want, but wrap around very tight, and then you can pull this off, and that's just gonna help us create a little tiny neck. So needle felt that down. You can fuss over it later. Just get it to hold in place. And now we've still got our little, our two little flaps here. We're going to push that up onto our dolly and around the body here. So now this is our little attachment. And you can needle felt this initially just to the body. Don't worry about it. Don't fuss over it. We're gonna wrap core wool over it right now. We just want it to stay on there while we wrap our core wool. Okay, there we go. That's what we need. Now, take our core wool. I like to work with it in really long strips, which is like why, why I like the roving uh, for this, but it doesn't matter. If you have batting, you can pull off a long strip. Roving, in its true sense, is nothing more than a long strip of batting. So pull yourself off a nice long piece. Oh, y'all like the scarecrow idea. We do have a video on making just a scarecrow head and it's pretty old, but you might like it. It's kind of fun. Okay, so here we have our little piece. We're going to start wrapping at the body. You can just push those arms up out of the way. Don't even worry about anything above the shoulder joint at this point. You can wrap this down, tack it just in place. And what we want to do here is wrap very, very tightly because we're gonna work this whole little dolly in phases. So we're gonna start at the top. Notice I'm twisting the dolly and I'm pulling this very tight. Not so tight that it tears, but tight enough that I have a strong tension. We wanna wrap without any air. And if you work with this batting, then you can go back and forth if you want, meaning it's going to grab onto itself. So I usually wrap a few wraps with holding to this and then I'm going to twist it and twist it away from me. It's just about control. It's nothing more than control. We do want to wrap the base bigger and go ahead and let the wool go further. It's okay if it builds up further away uh, from the very bottom stem. That's no problem. Go ahead and do a few rolls here and then go back up. Your chenille stem is going to feel kind of bendy and loose until you build up a strong core, that's totally okay. And be careful not to get this too big as we go through multiple passes. But what I do, the top meaning, don't let the top get too big. We want our, this little doll, I like her to be conical, at least for my preference. And notice that I just went up and back. No problem there as long as you're holding the tension and you have minimal air in your piece then you can now see it holds itself all by itself. So now you can needle felt it in place and with each length of core wool or any wool that we apply, as you get to the end of a strip, that's when you want to needle felt it down. So it's better or more effective to build up several layers than to, and needle felt them in between, than to put on a great big heap of layers and try and needle felt through it. It's, you'll, you'll almost never get a firm piece if you take that approach. And again, we want them firm so that they really hold up over the years to play, to display, to being passed down, to being taken on a trip or thrown in a bag. Mm -hmm. 
Yay, so happy you all are here. Hi, Karen. Hi, Tammy. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Hi, Kat. So glad to see you all. Thank you all so much for being here. And um, it was nice to see people commenting in the beginning of why they like to needle felt. Really, I just like how I feel when I needle felt. And that's my biggest, or, or felting in general, is my biggest motivation is just how I feel. And these little dolls are always sweet and fun to make. And surprising, you know, how much personality they can have for not having a little face. <laughs> that actually adds to their charm. Okay, so what we're going to continue building this up. I'm just going to show you one more pass for those who are new, and then we're going to jump ahead. So whenever I start as I'm building her up from flat to a cone, is I'm going to always start at the bottom. Whenever you start another round, take just a second and needle felt that anchor down the piece that you're adding. Just always anchor it down. And then again, I'm twisting the sculpture as opposed to wrapping. Instead of flipping the wool over and getting lots of air and twists in it, I like to hold this tension and twist the piece. You can build up a few layers right here and then work your way back up the sculpture. Just remember to, however you twist it, to hold that tension. And then keep in mind that if you're making a small, like a childish type doll, you may not want this top part to be much bigger than the base of the head or the neck. So now let the bulk come into the bottom as you build up these layers. Twist it tight and needle felt it down. And go over the whole thing, needle felting each pass, each phase as you go. Um, needle felt it all flat and smooth at each layer. Some people do like to, instead of build this up, they like to tie the wool down. It's not an approach that I do. I have seen it and you're welcome to use whatever approach appeals to you. But from this point on, I would just keep adding, I would needle felt this more fully and then I would just keep adding wool mostly at the base, always tapering it as we go, getting it nice and smooth until we have this. It's not much further, and I do want to share my measurements with you because I've been I'm fairly consistent when I make these little dolls, and I like the base is about one and a half inches. So if the head is about an inch, and then the base is about one and a half inches, that's how you get this little shape I have right here. Uh, the Audrey asks, is the body core wool or MC1? Audrey, this is core wool. So MC1 on the head, MC1 on the arms, and core wool on the body. So here we have our body ready to be covered. At least mine is. It doesn't need to be much more refined than this. And my little doll at this point weighs about 0.7. So it's pretty dense. I really enjoy making them kind of dense so that they'll hold up. It's not rock hard, but it's fairly dense so that it's not going to squish out of shape if I squish it. It's not going to lose its shape. Okay, we want to cover this now and I cover the whole thing with yellow. I'm not gonna try and fuss with the stripes. So we're going to, we're gonna, we're gonna put black stripes over yellow. I brought in narrow uh, strips of MC1 batting. Uh, you know, traditionally MC1 batting was available in two ounces or more, and we've been offering it in smaller increments at the request of you, our beautiful friends. So I wanted to show you that even if you're, I'm, here I'm picking out stuff, it's been next to my black, sorry silk. <laughs> um, even if you have little strips, it's totally fine. Uh, rather than one big piece, well then just work in strips. And I always like to let the wool go ahead and stick off the bottom. So I will piece it around as we go. And you just want a little bit of an overlap uh, with each layer, just like that. So I would, if you're working with strips, it's totally fine. And I will lay down the more blunt, thick portion first. And from this point on, I'm really gonna work with my cluster of fine needles. And again, y'all, whoever who has been needle felting with me for a while, first of all, thank you for being here and uh, making my job so pleasant. Um, I always start by anchoring down this first stretch. Uh, this is just a little piece of hay, don't worry about it. If 
it, you can just pick it out of the very surface layers when you get there. You don't even know what will be the surface layers yet. But for this, I like to needle felt it around as I go and pull it taut and only overlap as much as you need. So there's no reason to make it big and bulky. Like once you have full coverage in the overlap there, you can pull the rest of this off and that'll help you keep it nice and even as you build up layers. So needle felt this around, uh, working out the excess as you push it around. Don't come back needle felt here. Just start where you started and work your way all the way around. It'll keep you from getting lumps and bumps and folds and creases if you work methodically from one point around the doll. Okay, I'm gonna read a couple of questions. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna work on this for just a second, but I wanna make sure that we get to <laughs> everything okay y'all are y'all are beefing me up here i i it's so funny i so y'all said your comment about netflix i was going to tease you when we started and tell you that that we were filming a special for netflix so you guys should applaud loud because <laughs> we're filming a special for netflix wouldn't that be fun if netflix did a felting special mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very fun um, Jennifer Carus says she likes to watch all the old videos before she goes to bed. They make her happy. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Very sweet. Well, I love felting pretty much in the, just the final hours before I go to bed. My last hour I always spend with my husband. We always hang out and just help each other relax. But I felt just before that so that I can just chill out. It's my favorite thing to do after work is to come home and felt which I know some of you might think that I sit here and felt all day, but <laughs> I only felt at work with you right now, right now. This is Lumpy, your job, and we want to patch this into, this is Lumpy, your job is to smooth it out. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, for, I'm gonna show you this first, uh, you can peel this MC1 batting to a thinner layer if you, if you don't need it thick. Um, up at the neck, we don't want it too, too thick. And we're gonna put black right up here so you don't have to go very thick. Um, so we're just gonna put a little layer right here around this part of the body and right at the neck, it will be black. So I just wanna show you how to, how to piece if you're not used to working with this. Uh, you always just want this like gentle overlap of layers and so here where we're joining I'll still start at the back just like we did I'll start with the blunt edge just like we did this time I'm going to work with a single needle for the moment I'm just going to tack that down I like to go this way so this is the loose end right here don't let your needle go this way there's no reason to go this way go this way and get it like you're pushing it that way and the same thing with the bottom. The bottom part where you're joining here, you don't want that loose. If it's blunt, I mean, you don't want it blunt and you don't want it to be a fold. So if it's blunt, then just taper it down a little bit until it lays down and then take your needle and go in that direction. Go in the direction you're blending. just like that and you won't be able to see the join now right now you see all my needle marks but keep in mind and for my more experienced friends who are on here we don't want to focus on the needle marks we want to focus on all the sticky uppy bits because the needle marks just show you at this stage that uh, the, there is more compaction that can be achieved in the fiber so work your way around Cover this little dolly completely in yellow, and before we move on, you're gonna to want to smooth all of this out. There's no real secret to smoothing out the fiber. MC1 batting will needle felt very smooth and flat. You may not have it where you are. You may have something that's a little more wiry or a little more coarse. So we're going to give you um, just one extra step. But the first is for everybody, you want to needle felt this all so flat that it can't be roughed up with your finger. Use your fine needles. You can use the cluster. You can use a tool if you like it. Uh, but notice that you can needle felt at these very, very shallow angles. I mean, shallow pokes. Shallow pokes. We don't have to go super deep. 
um, because our base is so firm, then we can do these shallow pokes just like this. And I'm gonna give you one more view here, see if this is helpful at all. Um, here you can see how it's kind of lumpy. Then all we're doing is shallow, shallow, shallow pokes. And if you go across your entire doll, whether it's with a cluster of fine 42 triangle needles, maybe you have a 40 spiral, maybe you don't know, just choose the one that feels like you get the least resistance. Um, and you could also be doing this with a single 42 triangle needle and just poking. You want to just poke all the sticky uppy bits until they're laying down. And I'm not going like this. I'm just, I'll poke right where y'all can see. We're just taking the parts that are still sticking up and tacking those down, okay? So just get all those laying flat. That's your job right now, and I'm gonna jump to stripes. So here is um, our little bee girl is well on her way. Um, we've got all of our yellow laying down. I went ahead and put my two biggest stripes in place uh, in the black MC1 because it does take time when you're going for a really smooth finish like this. It's, it's not going to go fast. So that I think is the fun part. Um, okay, so we're getting some requests here. Ladybug Girl, that sounds like great fun, right up my alley. Dragonfly Girl, which happens to be one of my totem critters, is a dragonfly. I'm down, y'all, I'm down. Okay, so here we go with our black again. Uh, let me get this in here so you can see. I'm going to take what will be a long uh, layer, uh, meaning a long stripe. This piece is a little uneven, so it just got just even it out whatever you have even it out i'm going to fold it over and i'm going to pull off my stripe so pull off your stripes i'm going to go ahead and just pull off two because i need to get her done um, so pull off your stripes and we're going to do one around the neck and one around the middle of the body so why don't we just start at the neck if you want to give it a fold you can just like we did on the arm we're going to go i like to go right up around the neck and uh, we're basically gonna kind of go, you can go over the arms and under the arms, or you can split your wool and uh, you can split your wool and go through the arms. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to give her a little bit of a collar around her neck, and then I'm gonna go under her arms as well. I thought that seemed like design-wise, uh, like a good way to go. So I'm just trying to keep my black a little bit clean and that's why I have her on the felt. It's just a piece of wool felt. You can use other fabric. Oh, ancient videos, I used to use linen um, on there. Watch out for your wires. And again, I'm using my fine 42 triangle needles. So we're just going above the arms and then we'll go below the arms as well. We're just giving her a high a little collar. Okay, so we see lots of votes out there for ladybugs and dragonfly <laughs> dragonfly dolls. I can't wait to see them. I'd love to make them, but I can't wait to see what y'all make. Okay, so I'm just needle felting around the arm, if you will. Like if this is the arm, I'm just needle felting this side and this side and this side and this side. I know it's kind of dark maybe to see. Needle felt on both sides. And then I'm gonna make that stripe, before I finish it off, off, just make it a little bit bigger so that I go underneath the arms. And in this time, I'm not going to fold the top, but you can fold the bottom. So if you fold the bottom, it, it does make it a little bit more tidy. And then I'm gonna go just right underneath the arm there. You don't have to fold it. If you do, it just reduces the amount of time you're chasing uh, those little stray fibers. It's not required. So if your fiber has a longer staple length, then just work with what you have. If it doesn't, you know, um, doesn't work quite like MC1, just work with what you have. The key is getting it all well felted and laying down. And that requires intention in the first place and a little bit of patience. Yep, someone says they're getting tons of ideas for angels. We we have some we have a we have an angel in in the works. I've uh, been working. I have I started working on it last year and didn't finish in time for the holidays. So I hope to have something for y'all for the holidays this year before too much time goes by. 
Okay, so this is how we do our stripes. I wanna hurry and get uh, one more stripe on there. Uh, and I'm gonna probably have to get it on there in a draft mode so I can show you how we do all the other parts. Um, so let me get a rough stripe in place here. And everything I'm showing you today is kind of quick paced. It's not uh, refined and finished. I don't needle felt it all this fast. So take your time and have fun with that. Now see how this is kind of loose and squirrely? It's okay if it's that way. You're just gonna have to spend a little more time refining it and uh, chasing those loose edges. But it's just as fine to do it this way. And then you just have to coax all the edges as you uh, needle felt it down. And I just rip it off just like that. And then we'll start right here. And this is how it just coax it like this. So just coax it as you go. And get it in place. And then you could come back and tidy up all the edges. Okay. Yep, okay, y'all like the folding the, the, the edges. Yeah, and if you can't, or for some reason, something your stuff is too bulky, well then you can just kind of tack it down and then you go after it just like this. Just before it gets too far down, then scoot it in. You can pull it a little bit tight, a little bit taut, and just guide those fibers right where you want them. Um, okay, and if you have too much, well then you can tear it off or rip it off or whatever. But we're gonna have to jump to our little bee, our little bee head and our little bee wings. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, I mentioned in the beginning, so here's kind of what we're, we're working with. There is a kit available for this little girl. If you just wanna download uh, the pattern for the wings, there's a PDF, or if you just want a supply list. Um, so these are actually, um, they're pretty cute little bee wings that we're gonna put on her. And why don't we just do that next, since we're on the body. And um, I promise you that I will clean up this stripe and make it nice and tidy, but we'll have to jump from that now. That's what I get for not folding it over. Okay, so for the wings, I guess you have to decide who's the front and, and who's the back of your doll. This feels like the back of the back of my doll because the shoulder's a little more narrow here. And here are our wings. Um, I didn't bring them to cut out for you, but the wing pattern you're gonna get um, is just like this. You can cut it out. If you get the PDF, if you get the kit, you're gonna get this, except it's not colored. I colored mine with a yellow highlighter because I wanted them to be a little more bright and fun. But if you decide to do a B a little more natural, then they don't have to they're not gonna be this bright. So just grab yourself, this is just a big yellow highlighter, and you'll feel that this is a, on um, the same transparency film that we used on our landscapes a few weeks ago, and there's a side that's a little more rough, and then there's a side that's more smooth. So I just add the color to the side that is a little more rough and it'll dry pretty quickly. So, you know, you might decide that you want to use these for the dragonflies we were talking about. Um, just dry them out a little bit. And you could use a different color highlighter. You could use purple or whatever you want. I attach mine right back here in between uh, the shoulder blades. And you can, so right here you can see how solid this little piece is. You want it solid enough that these aren't going to break, but you can poke a little hole in it. So I'm gonna use more of a coarse needle, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole. I, this is not good for my needle. You could use a regular sewing needle or something, but I want a little bit of wool to go through there. And I'm gonna use either the, you can use the black wool or the sari silk uh, waste as well. And just get this a little, just get it narrow enough that you can kind of attach uh, it. We're gonna basically staple it down with fiber. You can sew it in place if you want, but I decided just to attach mine with wool. I know that's difficult for you to see, but we're just gonna take a little bit of our black MC1 fiber, and we're basically gonna staple it over the top of the wing, just like that, and some will go through it as well. So lay it on there. Use, I'm gonna use a, a 38 needle, and I'm gonna go at the top, I'm gonna go at the bottom, into the, the black stripe, into the top, into the bottom. So I haven't even gone through the wing yet, and they're gonna stay 
they're going to stay on there. And it's barely tacked on there. But if you're like me and you want to make sure they're on there, then you can just poke through that hole that you made. Make a tiny, tiny hole. And so, again, you can sew it on if you want, or you can kind of staple it on with fiber and it's in place. And that way there's no glue or anything fussy and you can even fold them a little bit if you want and give them a little bit of shape. So our wings are in place, our stripes could use a, a little love, but let's give our girls some bee hair. Uh, I chose the black uh, sari silk waist because it's just so frizzy and cute. And I don't know if y'all can see this, so sari silk waist is actually made from recycled saris uh, that are worn by women in India. So it's a bunch of gnarled um, black silky threads, and we have this in tons of colors, but I thought it was just perfect for bee hair, and I didn't get fussy with it at all. This is what I did. I just took a chunk uh, like this, and she has kind of a bob, so you're going to get a, a small amount in your kit, enough to kind of make the hair. And so you're going to have all these cut ends, and I wanted the cut ends to be down. So literally, <laughs> just like this, and needle felt it right on her head. Now, I did give her like a widow's peak, if you will, but you don't have to start with that. Um, I just want to get it attached onto her head first um, and kind of in place so we can style her do. And in person, I don't know if it shows up here, but it just looks adorable. So you don't have to do a widow's peak if you don't want, but um, you can. I thought it seemed kind of buggy for her to have a widow's peak for some reason. And so I'm just gonna pull this down here in what feels like the middle for me, and I'll tack that down and then push this back. That's kind of how I went about it and so fuss with that as much as you as much as you want to pull this forward and push that back just pretty simple and I probably want it a little the whole thing to come a little more forward onto her head so pardon me while I get it a little more to my viewpoint forward and this stuff back and then tack all this down you don't have to make it flat against your head. I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to needle felt this sari silk waist in place. And then you can just have fun kind of styling her hair. Um, and originally I just gave her this cute little bob just like this. And of course I needle felted it around the back. But I had some sari silk waist left over. And so um, I decided to make her a little bun, sort of a beehive-ish bun. Now, if you don't have enough of the sari silk waist, you can build it up with the MC1 black, but I kind of took some of what I had left, which it wasn't really a whole lot, but I'll, let's say it was about like this much, about like this much, and I just twisted it into kind of a bun around my finger. Um, so that one point can be tapered and one part can be up and then just plunked it right back here on the on the back of her head just like that so you can build that up with regular wool first or you can do it with your sari silk way so she gets kind of a little bun back there and shape it how you want it now my husband said she needs a flower and I never found a place, I never just decided on a, on a flower for her, but I did give her a little bun and then I used a tiny bit of the MC1 yellow and just tape, just tease it out um, and I just did a little wrap around her bun. Oh, we have to do her antenna, so I'm gonna jump to that. So if you want to give her a little wrap around her bun, then you can uh, tack it down and just spiral it, spiral it around and needle felt it as you go. It's totally your option, but I would, I would needle felt it as we go. But I should jump to her antenna so we can get those in place because we're almost done with our B-girl. Um, okay, so here's our antenna. I chose to use our four millimeter glass black eyes for her. And yes, yeah, so someone said she could have a headband with antenna. I did think of that at first, but then I decided to use these little uh, glass eyes. Now, we don't need the full length. Uh, it's come, there's two eyes on a wire. We don't need the full length of that. So I'm gonna give myself, though, 
about, I'll see how long I gave myself. That is about uh, an inch and a quarter. Yeah, about an inch and a quarter there. I'll do the same thing here. You don't have to be overly fussy about that length, an inch and a quarter. And then we had leftover um, black chenille stems. And you don't even have to do this, but I just wrapped it around just like that and left a little bit of wire exposed. I've got fuzz attaching to everything I'm doing today. So I wrap that tight. And you can make yours as long as you want. I think my other one, my other one might have been a little bit longer now that I look at it. Just make them as, as long as you want. And then decide where you want them to go in her little in her little bee head. So I kind of like them sticking out this way and here. So I'm going to put where I think I want them to go. I'm going to put a little hole. Hard, it's going to be hard to find that hole, but nonetheless, I'm just going to kind of do it while I'm there, if I can find it. <laughs> And if you push your little wire back, then you can always bring it back down. So let's see if I can get it in there. I did put them on her um, before, I mean, I put them on after I had her hair in. So now that I'm on camera with you all, I can't do it. I'm gonna make a little hole in the, uh, in the sari silk waist if you have to, then just cut yourself a little hole because it just wants to seal itself up right now. But I did do this, uh, this is the order I did it when I made mine, is I, I put the uh, antenna on after, after I put the hair in. There we go. He's so cute. And it doesn't really matter what order you do these things. I would just say that uh, when you're working on your dolly, wrap the hands first, get them on the body and then um, and then wrap the arms. That's kind of an order that you want to do things. Get the head on before you wrap the body, kind of the order that we did those. But you could build out these other details. Like you could do the wings very last if you want to. And if this is going to be a child's toy, well then what you might want to do is go ahead and uh, glue those antenna in um, go ahead and glue those antenna in so that they don't fall out. I know it's hard to see her with my, <laughs> with my dark shirt behind her, but there's Bee Fairy 2, a little rough and ready, and Bee Fairy 1. And the only real difference is that I gave Bee Fairy 1 her own little pollen pouch. Uh, and in the kit, we're going to give you a little bit of that orange cream so that you can make your own a little pollen pouch as well. And what I did was I needle felted a tiny little bead. I put black on the back and then I literally just ran a needle and thread up through the bottom and up through her hand so that she's holding on to it. But it seemed like a good way, um, it seemed like a good way to get her to hold on to it is just to go ahead and, and sew it to her hand. So I'm looking at a couple of questions y'all have here. One is, does the silk come in the kit? Yes, you're gonna get this black sari silk waist in the kit along with the glass eyes so that you can make your little antenna just like I did if you want. <laughs> Thank you so much, y'all. Um, uh, what else? You guys are said they're getting so many ideas. I'm so love that because that's all this is. It's just fun time. It's just play time. Hopefully you enjoy everything you make. And these little fairies, for me, they're just so cute and they're so playful. And I think what a great what a great thing they would be for maybe a little couple of little girls to play with or 
Um, I don't know. I just like having them on display. <laughs> feel, feel blessed to have them here. So thank you all so much for felting with me today. Dilla says she's never made anything like this. Excited to give it a go. I love hearing that. Um, Laura Ricks says super cute. So for those of you who don't know, um, Laura Ricks is going to be my very special guest next week. So you're going to want to watch the show next week. She is coming back uh, for, to film more classes for our online school. We have lots of great classes, more advanced classes, and even some free classes in our online school, feltingtutorials.com. You can check out the free classes and see if you like learning in that environment. If you make your own little fairy doll, I hope that you will tag us on Instagram so we can see what you're making and hope that you will um, join us also in our Facebook group. And then here now is the most magical Fairy Anne with prizes as promised for everyone who's contributed during the show. Did you make a bee fairy while we were in here, Anne? <laughs> I, in my mind, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she made one in her mind. So Anne has been writing down names of everyone chiming into the conversation. And thank you so much for felting with me today. Uh, what are we giving away, Anne? Today we are giving away a bee fairy kit. Yay! So we're going to pull two names out of this hat right here. And you get to choose your skin tones. Uh, so remember that. It's super mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who do you got, Anne? I have... Susan Kutnick. And I have Felicia Aaron. Congratulations, gals, and thank you everyone so much for hanging out with us today. We hope that you enjoy all the rest of your week. Thank you for felting with us. We'll see you in the Facebook group. Make sure to tag us, and hey, if you had fun, maybe give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can see you next time when Laura Ricks will be our guest in the studio. Yay! So excited! All right, guys, have a great week. Thank you so much. Bye! Bye.